in the heat of the Beaver Valley. CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, the Chicago Bears against the New York Jets. Giant Stadium, the home of the Jets in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 35 degrees, the temperature. It could have been a lot worse. That's the AFC East picture. A must win for the Jets, who are tied for first place with Miami and New England. Those two play Monday night. The NFC Central is owned by Chicago. They have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. A lot of people say that the Bears don't have to win this game. It doesn't mean that much to them. With me, of course, is John Madden, and let me put that question to you. How much does it mean? I think it means an awful lot to the Chicago Bears because I think the Bears are the best team in the NFL, the best team in football. I think they're going to go all the way and win the Super Bowl. Now, if that's true, then they just beat the Jets because they're a better team. You don't need reasons to win. If you do, you're not going to go all the way. I really believe that they are the best, and I think if they win, I think they go all the way through this thing. And I think if they don't, if they need reasons to win, then I don't think that they beat the Jets today. I also don't think they go to and win the Super Bowl. Weather conditions this afternoon. Temperature 35 degrees, 38 percent humidity. Winds up to 23 miles an hour. And it's supposed to stay just about like this. Yes, to the 15. Bobby Humphrey was there. The lineups for the Bears. McMahon, the quarterback. Peyton and Suey, the runners and golf, and Dennis McKinnon starting at wide receiver. Up front, Covert, Hortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, Van Horn, and Emory Moorhead starts at tight end. First and ten, Bears at their own 14. Jim McMahon starts with Peyton alone setback. Willie Golf wide to the left. Now Suey comes back in the backfield with Peyton. McKinnon wide to the right. McMahon pulled him offside. It'll go against the Jets. Man's voice. First and five. He's got some inflection. McMahon to Suey. Looks like he's about a foot shy of the first down. Charles Jackson and Gastineau on the stop. Let's look at that Jet defense. Gastineau, Klecko, and Barry Bennett in their three-man front. Jackson, Clifton, Mill, and Bob Crable starting at linebacker. And the secondary, which has really been banged up, will open this way. Glenn and Lynn, the corners, Springs and Hamilton, the safety men. Dennis McKinnon this time goes wide left and golf comes to the other side. First down bear. He got it. Here's Peyton. Effort. And he gets about five or six. Bennett again on the stop. Let's check out some of that blocking up front. Well, you know, the Jets are using the same type of thing as the Bears. You see Klecko in there. He's in the middle and he's cocked off to the right. So what they do is they start a double on him, push off, and then Peyton comes right in off that block. That's, and maybe get something. I think what they plan to do here is start off with a quick screen pass out to Al Toon. And Toon is split close to the right sideline. They go right to Toon. They go high. Hartenstein chases the play down, along with Otis Wilson. Now let's check the starting lineups. First for the Jets, the offense. O'Brien, the quarterback, Freeman McNeil and Tony Page, the runners. Two fine wide receivers in Toon and Walker. And the offensive line has McElroy, Sweeney Fields, Alexander, Marvin Powell, and the fine tight end, Mickey Schuler. Second and nine, they got a yard. They go with two tight ends this time. 
Rocky Cleavers up on the line, and that's Cleavers up on the line, and that's Tudor in motion. They hit Billy Neal, hammered by William Perry just as soon as he got the ball. The refrigerator. The cold shouldn't bother him. The Bear defense. Hartenstein starting in place of Hampton. Steve McMichael and William Perry inside, and Richard Dent. The other defensive end. Wilson, Singletary, and Cliff Thrift instead of Wilbur Marshall. And in the secondary, now famous, Richardson, Frazier, Durison, and Fenson. Third and long. The fact that O'Brien had adequate time. Bears will put it up on first down. McMahon to call. He's got a first down and more. Whirls into jet territory. Kerry Glenn tackled him a gain of 16. A couple of times. Same thing. First down, Bears. There's the Jet 30. McMahon back there. McMahon chased by Gassineau. Sidearms it to Moorhead at about the 23. Lance Mel on the stop. A gain of eight. He seems to be perfectly content with his role. The give is to Peyton. And Peyton gets down close to the 10. A gain of another eight yards. Kirk Springs made the stop. Only one team all year long has been able to get 100 yards on the ground against this Jet front seven. That was the Los Angeles Raiders in the first game of the year. That's their average. So they've been very difficult to run against. But the Bears seem to have figured out a scheme. Well, of course, having to come up with a fumble out of that, 22 seconds remaining first quarter, a timeout. Ditka a little displeased. Well, the thing that he's displeased at is his, his quarterback, Jim McMahon, or whoever took the timeout. In fact, McMahon started to walk over to him, started to talk, put his hand up and says, okay, if you don't want to talk, I'll go back in. <laughs> they had a, a little meeting about several matters last week. Well, you know, they hadn't talked in a month. Jim McMahon and Mike Ditka. And uh, well, uh, Ditka was talking to his roommate and telling him things. And McMahon was talking to the general manager and saying, well, why doesn't he talk to me? So anyway, they did get together and talk. That Pete Marjoram has come into the game. And Dennis Gentry as well. We've seen him spring Gentry open a lot of times from this formation. Marjoram. is the ball carrier. Again, the Jets were offside, and I think it was Pleco again. First down to 34. McMahon. Trable was there quick, but they get the ball to right, and he's still going. Another Bear first down. Kurt Springs. Kyle Clifton, a gain of 13. 5'11 and 216. Chicago has been controlling the game. 1450, they've had it. The Jets just 350. Score is 3-3. But the Bears are close. McMahon whoops it out to right. Touchdown. He did get in. Seven yards from McMahon to right. That's why you like that big tight end the closer you get to the goal line for two reasons. One, it's always crowded down there, and he's easy to see. And two, once he gets the ball, if you can get him the ball around that two or three, he's big enough and strong enough to do this. Just turn it up, boom, just put that right shoulder down, have guys hitting, falling off you, flopping on the ground, but you still get it in the end zone. Good that Kevin Butler didn't have to tackle him. Freeman McNeil for a loss by Otis Wilson. Loss of about four. One of the things, and we see, we see that Wilbur Marshall is in there, and I thought that would happen. I think, you know, when the Bears get a defense like this and you got guys like that that are playing, have been there all year, and, and you get the flu, I still think you play the next day. I mean, they, maybe they didn't think he could, but guys like that, when that bell rings and, uh, you know, they tee it up, they're going to be out there playing. You got Hampton in there playing, too. 
started. Here's O'Brien to the outside, intended for Toon. Buddy Ryan in the stocking cap, this year's defensive genius and the man who developed it, what has become now the famous bear look. You know, Buddy has an interesting thing is he has starting points. He really doesn't have a game plan, but he's going to start something and he's going to give it to you. And if you get a block, he'll go to something else until he finds something where he can whip you where you can't get a block. So this first quarter and maybe into the first half is just a trial type thing. Find out how they can get guys free. Third down. Brian was chased by Durson. That was a blitz. It's McNeil. And he's going to be short of the first down. Tackled by fencing. I think, I think that's the thing. You know, he started out, he didn't do a lot of blitzing on this. And now he started out. Now here's Dewerson right here. He brought him that last time in a run. Now he's going to bring him again on the pass. O'Brien gets back, has a little quick pass out here to McNeil. See, here comes Dewerson, boom, right up the middle. Page didn't block him. Page ran by him. But luckily, he had a quick pass out to McNeil. Gentry in the game. McMahon, the quarterback, still. Gentry. McMahon ducks under Gastineau. Chased by Bennett. Out of bounds, he goes. Again, he's pushed this time by Lester Lyle. But no flag now. And McMahon still hasn't reappeared. There he comes. He didn't have a chance on that one to get a first down. It was a pretty good rush from the outside by Mark Gastineau. Coming from the left side, he made it. See if the Jets made any changes here. They go deep. Intended for Walker. Bears got some pressure. Steve McMichael on O'Brien. I'm surprised that they went for a shot here, Pat, when they got the ball. They do have good field position, yes, but... I think what they haven't established yet is moving the ball. You know, that we can move the ball. We can get some first downs. We can do these things. I don't think you need that one quick score. I think you have to establish a little running, a little passing, the shorter type stuff. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, one setback. O'Brien. By Hampton. We've seen him do that a lot. Well, of course, Dan Hampton is playing playing this game on one leg today, but he can still. He's not getting a big pass rush, but you see him. He's the, the second guy in from this side, starting over there on Marvin Powell. Just gets a little push up there. Now he stops the rush. Watch him. He's just going to stop right there and jump up. You see him. He jumps up and gets both hands in the air. That wasn't a big pass rush, but he was able to get between the quarterback and the receiver. That brings up a third down situation. That's Toon in motion. Over the head of Kurt Sohn, incomplete. With the wind, they might be in range for Leahy to try a field goal. They'll bring up second and ten from the 20. Oh, man, wide open is Walter Payton, and it's a foot race. Payton. Down at the 15. He didn't see that man coming up behind, Kerry Glenn. A gain of 65 yards, and Peyton broke free. I tell you, he's dangerous from whatever thing he does. Here he is on this time. They're going to start again to the inside, bring Peyton here, swing him here. He gets linebacker coverage on him. He gets by him right here and up the sideline. See, they bring the formation in. You see the outside receiver come in right there. No one's out here on Peyton. And boom, he can get that thing outside the blitz hole. Tony Page is in front of McNeil. They say, not that way, make it second and nine, right at midfield. Here's leading 13-6. O'Brien chased by Dent. Can McNeil open? Just went right through his hands, and he's disgusted by McNeil. Toon goes in motion. They have three receivers on this side. But that doesn't matter. As Hampton and Dent and Wilson meet at the quarterback. 
Look at Hampton. He said, I don't know what I did. I just lined up over the center on that play. I started my penetration. Here's Dan Hampton here. He just starts. He gets right there. O'Brien tries to do a little spin and get. By the time he does, here's Hampton. All this stuff happens here. Watch Hampton. He, he just goes to the left. The center went to the left. Hampton went straight up the middle. That's what he's saying. I was there. The center went the other way. No one blocked. Second down. Brian. Hit by Richard Dent. The ball is loose. And William Perry comes up with it. The refrigerator. That's why you always want your best pass rusher at that right defensive end. Because you'll see Dent coming from here. It's a quarterback's backside. And you get more, not only more sacks, but you get more fumbles there. When you come from the back, O'Brien, the right-handed quarterback, looking downfield, gets hit right in the back, and boom, it pops out. The fridge almost broken. O'Brien might be hurt. Holding his right wrist. I noticed he had it. Had a brace on it yesterday when we were talking to him. When we were talking to him. McMahon. A lot of time. Chased by Gastineau, and he can run. And the ball's loose again. And goes out of bounds. So that one is still going to be the Bears' ball on that play. I'll tell you, you know, they talk about Mark Gastineau, and they say that he runs, that he runs as fast. Now watch him when he gets here in the backfield. McMahon takes off here. Watch Gastineau come and catch him from behind. You know, and they say that he runs as fast as backs and stuff. Watch him here. He's fumbling around here. Now right here. Now watch when McMahon takes off. Gastineau's behind him. Here he comes. Oh, whoa. And Left that ball out of there. Knocked the ball loose. McMahon, of course, was the last block on Richard Dent. The great defensive lineman. He did a pretty good job. Here comes Marshall on a blitz. And here's Dent from behind. And the ball's loose again. The Bears have it. Otis Wilson, number 55, comes up with the ball. Well, you know, it's the same thing. It's Dent again coming from that backside. The second time they've got him in this quarter. Watch Dent here. He's out here wide. McElroy is going to step out to block him. Dent with his speed just runs right by him. Now here's where, see, O'Brien doesn't see him, doesn't feel him. He starts to pull back that ball. Dent goes boop and knocks it right out of his hands. And Otis Wilson comes up with it. And the Bears get it at the Jet 25-yard line with 2.57 left to play in the third quarter. Three Jet turnovers. Team six, the Bears lead. They're going to have the wind in the fourth quarter. Jets need to go to work. McNeil hit from behind again by Richard Dent. I'll tell you, whatever they did at halftime, it sure worked on Richard Dent. He's made two plays where he's caused O'Brien to fumble. Watch him come again from the backside on the run on Freeman McNeil. You know, a lot of guys don't get blocked, but they never make that play. But Dent, if you don't block him and you're going to run to the other side, he's going to catch you. Single team. Look at this. In this whole second half or in that whole quarter, they wanted to win. They got the win. They only got 15 yards out of it. Ready Ryan for a report card uh, yeah. a couple weeks ago, and Buddy says, you're doing okay. So I passed my midterm. O'Brien is by Hampton and Dent again. Kurt Soon was the intended receiver. But O'Brien was buried. Now that's where O'Brien and the Jets have been having all their trouble is from that uh, backside pass rush. Again, he... But Michael knew. Singletary yelling instruction. And that's Otis Wilson. Coming from the outside. The fourth sack of the day by the Bears. That's the one that gave the Cowboys so much trouble. Remember Otis Wilson coming from the outside? Here he is. They get the two linebackers right here and boom, come right off this corner and hit O'Brien there. 
Watch, Marshall is is the inside guy. Otis Wilson, the outside guy. Look, they block Marshall, but they don't get Wilson. Front row, the full foam. You got to get that Otis Wilson blocked. I'll tell you, if he don't, he has a he has a sniffer on that helmet.